Welcome to the CES meeting. It is September 21st of 2022. This is the first meeting after the Tokyo plenary. So plenty to discuss, but first off, congratulations for, to Nicolo for um, uh, the refactors in both the web and, and 262 that, uh, that, went, uh, that were approved at plenary last week with, uh, um, <laughs> with no objections. It was wonderful. Um, and that sets us up. That sets us up really well to make progress on a simpler version of, I think, of the uh, simpler versions of many of our proposals, including blocks, uh, deferred execution, and uh, notably compartments. And um, which brings us to compartments layer zero, the first layer of <laughs> where, wherein we introduced the module constructor. Now, Carity some time ago proposed a pull request on the compartments proposal that um, changes the specification language to reflect a new shape for the module constructor in terms of um, in terms of uh, a handler object, which makes it more analogous to the proxy constructor. Um, and I can, uh, I'd like to go over that for the first part of this meeting. And if we get, uh, if we, uh, uh, if Daniel Ehrenberg or company attend uh, later in the meeting, we have, uh, I believe, more to discuss on shadow realms and uh, um, and uh, and exceptions passing through the callable boundary. Um, with that, I'm going to pull up uh, Carity's pull request so that we can take a look at it together. You should see fixes Octothorpe 77. Yes. Okay. So uh, the, the purpose of this pivot is to introduce an options bag to, uh, or not an options bag, but a handler object. We, we realized we needed an options bag at least as the second argument of the module constructor. And I don't know if we have a, a summary view of what the, uh, I haven't written, um, I haven't written up the, uh, the explainer for this yet. Um, but in short, it look, uh, the module constructor would look something like um, module and, uh, Oh gosh, what do we start with? It's the oh, it's source. That's right, the source, and then a handler object. The handler object is of the shape. Um, uh, so import hook, of course, and uh, that would receive the specifier and return um, return a module instance. Now, what's changed here is that. Carity realized that we do not need to specify the referrer as a second argument if referrer is an expando on the handler object and specifier hook receives this, um, much in the way that proxy handlers receive the, uh, have a, a receive the context or the receiver object. Um, so uh, that is to say, uh, instead of this, that. Um, and then, of course, because the handler, we, now we have a handler object, we have the opportunity to put in it. <coughs> oh, and notably, the import hook is optional. Um, the, uh, we, we've, we've, I believe, come to a mutual understanding that the import hook can fall back to the um, to a behavior that's associated with the module constructor itself um, through module context, um, which is how function constructors work. Uh, have I represented everything so far correctly? I think so. The only the only detail that should be clarified or should be added to this is that the 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 hooks are going to be read of the option bag once. And then they receive the options bag object as the. Probably missing stuff by using the bathroom. 
Oh, well, that's why it's recorded. <laughs> Alex, your your mic is hot. I'm sorry. I'm no sorry. No worries at all. Um, the um, so 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 the handler serves as not as a object um, uh, to dynamically invoke methods on uh, passing the, the the handler is the this, uh, but rather as an options bag uh, to obtain the members from at the beginning. You're basically going to avoid the mistake we made with the proxy handler. So yes and no, because the handler, like we eagerly get the hooks, but then we still use the handler as the this for the function call, for the hook calls. Oh, that's, that's fine. Continuing to use the handler as the this is fine. The main thing is that you're not doing a dynamic get to on, on the name import hook to get the import hook from the handler each time you want to use the import hook. Correct, correct, yes. Okay, yeah, that was a terrible mistake we made with proxies. Okay, well, so, it's but, to me like this is not controversial then. I just, I just wanted to add to Chris' explanation that this, I don't think that the pull request actually includes referrer as a property of the handler. Right. It's just that users can like put whatever they want in this handler and it's like accessible as this. That's right. So this allows us to formally ignore that referrer is a thing that happens in some environments, but not others. Um, and refer can be carried on the handler object. Um, on a So there's a per module handler. Um, but a, a pos but the import hook can be re reused across module instances. Wait, so let me make sure. So the 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 fact that there is a property named refer is does not appear in the spec. It's this is uh, does not appear normatively in the spec. It's just for that's for use by the user by the users of the yeah. API. That's yes. correct. Yes. Wow. Yeah, they can do it. In fact, in fact, uh, Mark, uh, just to uh, some things that I that came out when, when, I, when I was doing this is that they can achieve the same dynamic aspect of the proxies with this API. Because what happened is that you can define an option box that has the, the import hook, whose job is to just do a this dot my dynamic input hook, and then you can change that value dynamically. <laughs> yep, yep. So yep. You, 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 you are able to achieve the same thing, um, but for the intents and purposes of the, of, the, of the engine itself, we want to hold on to that if it yep. exists during yep. the creation. Yeah, there's no loss of generality, which is why the mistake we made with proxies was you know, even more of a mistake, um, is we could have, um, done the right thing without losing any any expressiveness but um so yeah that's great so the yeah i had not caught that so so the the referrer itself just does not appear normatively in the spec at all is that really that's really yeah there's no yeah, problem with that it's there is a problem with it at all um wow i don't love it but i also find no problem with it and it makes carity happy that makes me happy <laughs> okay, why don't why don't you love it? I don't love it because the refer uh, so so as we've discussed in previous uh, previous set strategies, the um, I do agree that there is tremendous value in being able to formally ignore concepts until they are needed for making the API educatable. Um, okay. To that to that extent, I agree that omitting the refer as a as a as a teaching device is useful and i think that that does inform api decisions that if the refer is something that can be omitted from early examples of the api in order to avoid confusing the reader while introducing concepts incrementally that means that it should appear in places where it's it should be optional and if it's positional it should be last um and to that part to all of that I agree with Carity. Um, where omitting it from the API, what I don't love about om omitting it from the formal specification is that I do not feel that it is an avoidable concept. Um, 
that any practical implementation of a module environment will need to mention a referrer. Um, and uh, as the base for resolving relative imports, uh, since every environment, support, almost every environment yeah. supports relative imports, and not having it mentioned, um, not having it mentioned uh, gives an opportunity for it to have like 10,000 different names, depending on which implementation you're looking at, reduces shareability um, and that kind of thing. But none of that so, would be a problem for behavior of the, of the implementation. Okay, so let me, let me raise then uh, two possible compromises with regard to how we word the spec uh, and see what, what our reaction to each of them is. Uh, one is that we simply uh, have non-normative text that makes it very clear that we expect a referrer whose value is a string and whose purpose is as stated. Uh, the, um, uh, the other uh, compromise we could make is to go ahead and actually specify it as a uh, optional pro that you know specify uh, in the normative text something that's kind of meaningless in a, from a normative point of view but could still fit within the normative spec language that there's an optional field named referrer whose type is expected to be a string uh, and uh, that's the only reference to it in the spec. I think I would be satisfied by the non-normative form and actually less satisfied by the normative form because um, it, 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 when you say it this way, it's very clear that um, if, is, if we say that there is expected to be, uh, there is expected to be a referrer property and, it, and if it existed is expected to be a string, um, the passive voice, turn, turning the passive voice into, into active voice tells us um, that what is going to expect it is the user provided import hook. So it's an internal contract, not a 262 contract. So having it non-normative would be satisfying to me. Um, yeah, especially as a, especially uh, in, so for people who are reading 262 and notice that it's missing, aren't surprised, uh, do, I, do not, do not leap to the incorrect conclusion. Yeah. We haven't accounted for it. Okay. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm, I like the, the not completely non-normative. Now, the other place where um, it's not just the user provided import hooks, right? I mean, on, on um, where, where does this whole system interface to the platform provided import behavior? Yeah, so this pull request does that. So there's a default behavior for both of the hooks that are defined there. Um, the, but before getting into that, just to note on the prior uh, uh, comment, the, the non-normative um, will be, will have to be very hand wavy because this referral doesn't have to be in a string. In, in, in fact, if you want to implement a, a or, or virtualize the module graph, most likely the referral will be as it is in 262, um, a, a module record or the equivalent that you have to a module record. Uh, so it doesn't have to be in a string by any means. Um, I don't think that's necessarily something that we have to add there, especially because you never really do anything with it. You really don't expect, I don't expect people to use the referral, um, to be honest. Uh, they, 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 they could be doing this without well, knowing the concept of referral altogether. I, that is false as far as I know, but um, I think I understand the source of the confusion. Um, but to drill into what Mark is saying, uh, which I think is insightful, the, yeah, what, so the default behavior, the default behavior of the import hook um, as written, can't take account for a referrer. 
That is to say that if you were to construct a new module, use the default import hook, it would not be able to use relative, that using the default import hook, the one obtained from the context, it would not be able to resolve relative, um, it would not be able to, under, uh, to resolve relative. Are, are you talking about the, the non-normative uh, text or are you talking about the default behavior? I'm talking about the normative behavior. Um, so, so I, uh, at least in HTML, due to how the HTML spec is currently written, the default, the behavior of the default import hook would be to resolve relative specifiers based on the like URL of the web page. Yes. And that's why what I have specified there, if I remember correctly, if you go to the diff, there is a if condition for the default behavior and that the the if condition will, will effectively do what what uh, what you're saying. Okay, so I, I did I I don't understand. Um, I I have let myself become blissfully ignorant of the um, of the browser world since walking away from it. Um, but uh, so can, can, so I I did not understand that. So. Oh, uh, when you have this import hook, like you can write your import hook implementation that uses the referrer in like some specific way. Uh, however, uh, like that referrer needs to be present in the way that your import hook function expects it. The HTML, uh, like the web right now, expects uh, the referrer to be a very specific data structure with some info and. Well, if you're using the, like, if you're creating a module in line, we're not attaching the specific data structure to the module. So the import hook has to fall back to a, some like default behavior because we cannot communicate the referrer in the way that HTML expects it. And so the default behavior is to resolve things relative to the web page. Uh, so you say relative to the web page. What does that? So normally, specifiers are resolved relative to the file, to the module where the thing is imported, right. with a very specific exception, which is when there is, uh, which is when you have a dynamic import in a moment where there is no active module or no active script. And uh -huh. specifically in HTML, that can happen if you have a dynamic import uh, in an event handler in line in HTML. However, with this proposal, we also have the case where we have the current module, uh, which is a module we created in line. So we have it, but it, the, like, the HTML side never saw that module. So do not have the chance to like, attach its information to that module. And so it will behave the same as having no, like from an HTML perspective, it's the same as having no active module. When so, things. so this, you're saying that, the, so, so HTML needs a refer that is more than a string, that is a structure. What does the structure consist of? I, uh, I, think, I, I think Mark is just such to intervene here. So just to maybe, provide more clarity on this. The, the referral argument uh, on the option box is not going to be used by the default input. Does that help? Uh, well, it, it, it certainly helps, but now it's leaving behind the the remaining I mean so the other shoe needs to drop you know it's, it's so it's not using the refer the refer from the options bag uh, what is it using it's using nothing um, which means that this has to be interpreted as it, it means that this example is invalid um, uh, let me see I'm not looking at the screen so, so far but this example is valid. So this example is saying you are importing foo. Does the comment relative on the web no longer? Um, right. 
Yeah, the, so this is, this is the feature that we leave behind. If we don't have a refer. No, no, wait, wait. So, okay, let me let me go back to the code here, the, the spec uh, to refresh my memory here. But the idea is that if we had to do the default import hook and you can search for import default import hook in the in the pull request, um, we use the module record itself, the module record itself, and the module record is the module record that we create for these um, uh, this module that you create by doing new module, right? So yeah, yeah. We, we provide that uh, intents to, uh, no, no, why, why do you put, oh. Um, so the, the assumption that I make in the pull request, I, so, and I was intentionally high, I'm waving there because this is an open discussion, obviously. But what I'm doing in the pull request is that the, when you create something like this that you have in the screen, the default hook, will pass in a referral to the input hook, which is going to be the module itself, the module that you declared by doing the new module, the module record for it. And so when you say, so, 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 so hold on. When you say pass in to the import hook, at, yeah. the, at, the, at the top of what's being projected right now, we see a, what I took to be the, the, the function type of the of the import hook, which is it has the only argument it has is a specifier string. And a this argument. And a this argument, but the this argument is the handler. Wait, wait, wait. Yes. So, so, okay. Can I can I present just yes. for a second? So maybe maybe that will help. Yes, yes. I'll articulate what, what it's doing right now. So this is the, the text. So we can, are. Can you, can you present? I just cannot read the source code for, for for ec markup. Could you Is there? Is do you have available the HTML rendering of that? Uh, I think I do. Let me see. No. I'll read it if I have to. But I, I think no. I, have, I have a local version of it. Let me see. If, if I may, I think that the the the. The reason why the example I suggested did not work does actually work. Is it does work. It does it work. Does, it does work. But, but there is a caveat to it. The host has to do some work. And that's what I define here. So if so this is this is the construction path. If there is no input hook or happens to be undefined, okay. We are going to create a closure, basically just an inline function. That inline mm -hmm. function is going to use. It's going to expect a specified parameter to be passed in. Okay. And it captures the module record itself that we are creating. So for the new module, we create a module record and then we create an instance of the module constructor, right? So the module record, we keep it in this in the in the closure as part of the context. Um so the and then we define the default behavior. This is the default behavior. The default behavior is just saying. I'm going to create a new promise. I will return promise back. And I will perform something on the host that I will provide the module record of the module that I just created. Oh, sure. And the promise capability. The host is responsible for deciding what to do with that specifier for the module record that we are providing. And the host can say, oh, I don't know this module record. It was created in user land. So that means that I should use the page, the, the, the content of the page as the context to define how the specifier should be resolved. So it's the content the host, of, of what page? The, the page in which this, this uh, module is being created. Or it's uh, the, the page, uh, pardon, specifically the, um, the realm in which the module constructor is intrinsic. Right, right. Oh, okay. And so, that, that's important because um, that is where we'll slip in and layer whatever, where we do evaluators. Um, 
that's where we slip in the <laughs> level of indirection saying that it's okay. not the page, it's the compartment or whatever. It's the evaluator context. Oh, or oh, 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 oh. Right. So the, the, the idea here is that we don't prescribe how this specifier is going to be resolved. We never prescribe that. The host is responsible for defining that. Um, we're just telling them the host, hey, this module record that happens to be created because someone do a new module, this is the module record for it. This is the specifier. You need to figure out how to resolve this. Resolve this promise for me, and and that's it. We don't we don't we don't prescribe. Different hosts might have different rules for that. Um, okay, so so let's bring this home to the compartment to, to the anticipated effect on the compartment proposal. Uh, so for me to for to create a compartment on host A that emulates host B. Um, now that the host is doing, now that to understand the host, we have to understand this extra context. Uh, how would one use a compartment to, to emulate this aspect of one host while on another host? Right. The, the answer to that is that uh, the evaluator's constructor receives a handler object that is analogous to the, the, the handler object received by the module constructor. Um, and in the re and, and it is analogous to the one by the module constructor because in addition to constructing a new intrinsic function, module, and eval, uh, it needs to associate those new intrinsics with its oh. handler object for the purposes of defining the behavior of dynamic import and script contexts. Got it. Got it. Okay, this is fine. This is this is this is hanging, starting to make sense to me. Good. Yeah. Um. Which which and since it's is, is so it will so the functionality of the handler object of the evaluator's constructor will provide the behavior both for dynamic import and script contexts and the default behavior for modules that are constructed without a specific import hook. Right, and all of that is trying to be relative to the compartment as a context, but not relative um, to the module within the compartment. That's correct. Got it, okay. Yeah, so on that ground, I think that what you're proposing is coherent, uh, Carity. We just, it, it just anticipates that we do, um, that we have uh, another level of indirection here in this, in this chunk of text. Yeah, and, and I don't know, I have to talk to Nicole about this one because after the refactor, this will change obviously, but I don't think it will change that much. We still have these three components that we have to work with. Uh, it's just a, a different API, but I think this will-, will Yes, it's very similar. Module record dot something to do the resolution of or something like that. And so on the same line, we do a pretty much the same for the meta hook. The meta hook is just saying, uh, if there is no meta hook, then this is a default meta hook. And what we do there is just saying, host, tell me what the properties should be for this module record. And I suspect that most of the hosts, especially on the web, will say, oh, this module record, we don't know much about it because this is brand new. Uh, we never seen this before, um, meaning it has to be, it was created by user land and I can use the, 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 the page settings object to decide what the meta should look like for that particular module. And then uh, from that point on, it's just the creation of the object and the caching of that object, but it's, it's the same principle, I will say, um, that we, we just don't prescribe what should go into that meta, we tell the host to create that meta for us. Okay. So in terms of action items, I think that what we've learned so far is that the shape of the normative text of this seems acceptable to everyone here. Is that correct? 
I think I did, didn't understand the point about meta, but it sounds like I don't need to because it doesn't actually show up in the normative text. Question mark? It shows up, but it behaves exactly as the input hook. So if you have the default input meta hook, it just does whatever relative to the compartment. While if you have the custom input meta hook, well, it does whatever it does. Okay. Yeah, it, the, yeah, the custom import hook has full control over the import meta. Um, <laughs> because it's constructing the new module instance. Right. Uh, but that, that does bring us to the, this does not yet address uh, the, um, the import meta hook um, that, or whether we do import meta hook or just have an import meta object on the, or, or both. <laughs> I'm, I'm not paid in on that topic yet. Um, well, and so now that we have a handler, if we had an import meta hook, would that just be another hook on the same handler object? It is, it is right now. Yeah, the, 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 the changes that I have is a, is a new hook on the same object with the same principles. And it just happened to be that the default behavior uh, called the host. So the host is going to build that object for us uh, and be cached. And the difference between what we had before and what we have now is that what we had before was eagerly created. So it's only during the creation that object was created up front. Now it is the first time that it's been called because it's not present. We call the hook, whatever the hook resolved to, we will catch it and we will never call that hook again. Okay, so so uh, so hold on. There's the, the time at which we call it is a really important yes. consideration here. Uh, there, there's two plausible times. One is, if the module itself has an import meta expression, then we call the import meta hook um, on module construction. Uh, and the other one is on the first use. I prefer that we just do it upfront on module construction um, because doing it on first use is, I don't know that it's it, it's. There I don't is. know that the interleaving there of user code during the access to the import meta object, the evaluation of the expression, is an issue to be concerned about. But I don't know that it's not an issue to be concerned about. Uh, but I know that if we're doing it at construction time, we still have the important optimization that the vast majority of modules never mention import meta. And then we avoid calling the hook for that vast majority of modules and the tiny number of modules that mention it and never evaluate it. I don't care to optimize those. Well, so a, a, a good, a, okay. So a couple of comments about that. So I, I don't have any strong opinion on these, but we'll, the cases where you do evolve, um, so ah. you, might, you might not have the methods <laughs> on the eval. I mean, the meta on the you're, source. You're talking about a direct eval. Yeah, yeah. No, even uh, yeah. So you 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 do eval, and in, in that eval, you're doing some uh, creation of a module, uh, a block in there. Uh, the, right. the the module itself will call that hook because it will inherit that hook. And, and now it's, that hook will be called later in time, not during construction, because you didn't know about upfront. So that's the only thing. So the, the thesis is that um, it is moot to attempt to detect whether a module uses import meta because it is not knowable in the face of direct eval. Correct. Uh, so I would, I would, I, uh, let me I'd revisit that. Um, the issue, the, the, let's, let's, let's rephrase the question as, do we statically know that this module does not use import meta? And if a module contains a direct eval, which re remember again is a static test, 
and it's a very, very, very tiny fraction of modules that actually do, uh, I would say if it uses direct eval or if it has an import meta expression, in either case, then it is not statically known not to have a direct, an import meta. So I would say if it has a direct eval, then you call the import meta hook up front. So that's that works. It is sufficiently complicated in contrast to um, the alternative of just calling the import meta hook that I think it's worth exploring whether there is actually a threat. Yeah. Leaving. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine to, to decide to say that we need to actually explore it. Um, but ha having not yet actually explored it, I'm not yet comfortable with the idea that we do it dynamically. Well, I think that it's oh, okay. So yeah, that, that works. Also, also the, well, I don't, I don't know, but the, I suspect that you have a inline module block that uses a meta um, during parse time, you know that there is a meta there, even though it's not at the same level, it's a deep. It's That's right. Deeper. So we could figure that out. I don't, I don't know the artifact to figure that out, by the way. Um, in the spec, I don't think there is anything there that does that. Obviously, we don't have the module that, blocks yet, but we could that, make that, it. That's, a, that's an easy that's an easy thing to to um, to deal with in the spec. And then the the other thing is that there might be other APIs like the import reflection or some sort, which we haven't explored in, in details. That they, they might need to inherit the hook. Uh, from the places where you do the import. And if that's the case, then um, there are or scenarios in which you have to determine that the eager creation of the meta object has to be, has to happen. Um, that's the only thing, but uh, I, again, I, I don't have any strong opinion here. Okay, so so you're right, the, the, the reflection thing, uh, obviously we need to understand the implications from that. Um, and right now, what's and our stance on reflection is that the result of doing a, um, you know, static import blah or whatever, however it is that we invoke the reflection gives us something that does, does or does not have a meta bound. Is that a question? Yes. That's probably for Nicolo. Sorry, the, yeah. the, the can you repeat the little last yeah. few questions? Yeah, so if I, if I have a um, you know, specifier and I say, I want the, um, uh, I want the reflective module. I don't want a module instance. I want, I want the, the static something. Uh, the static, the thing we've been calling a static module record um, uh, does not have a meta bound. Uh, is the, uh, and I remember that there was, we were going back and forth over uh, whether the result of reflection does or does not correspond to the static module record. And in particular, I think that the, if I remember correctly, the, the particular issue in that question was whether it has a meta bound. So even if it has, it's not a problem uh, because uh like when you see the import reflection statement you call the import hook and the import hook gives you a module a module object with some like metadata and we just return that module object as it is without actually evaluating it yet uh, however that object has all the hooks all the context that we need and so when we later evaluate the, the reflection object, we call all the hooks and it already has all the metadata that it needs. Uh, that, to be clear, I think that we have managed to preserve the separation of the static module record and the, and the, um, and the module record. The import, uh, I, 
import reflection is going to produce an instance of a module object that's backed by a module record and therefore contains all of the um all of the the, the import meta information the but it also contains a static module record which is not that does not capture a, a module source object which is backed by a static um uh module source record i think is what we're calling it i'm sorry that was i, I that that got that got too deeply nested for me to follow yeah there are, there are two parallel tracks there's the the reified in javascript and the spec fiction the this the, but they are parallel in both cases there is um, there is a separation of the static of the module from the module source. So th there is another thing that I just just occurred to me, and that might be interesting to explore. Um, and most most likely validation for me on this one. If I have a module that runs on a page, and it has an import meta that happens later in time, so I have a function that when call it, it, it use import meta for the first time for that module. If before I call that module, I push a new URL to the to the current page, and then I call the meta. What what do you mean by push a URL push to the current page? The history. You change, you change the you use the the an API, a DOM API to change the URL of the page. Basically, you go to okay. uh, example.com and then you okay. example.com slash bar. Okay. You navigate the page. You navigate the page, but without navigating. So it's the same route. Oh. It's just, you, you just change the URL, the base URL, the page you change. Oh. Uh, oh my God. And, and now you access the meta at that point. What oh. would be the value? And I don't know what the whole behavior would be, because I don't know if they're eagerly creating these, uh, ignoring what it is in the spec, no. the spec so, is cached later on. So uh it depends if we're talking about a module created by the host for example using import reflection or using the module constructor because if oh, it's so a, 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 an existing inline module today like forget about a new module that okay means, okay it's just uh, an inline so, module, yes, so module the, as soon that. as you create the module record it contains like it captures uh its url so even if you later call import meta uh like well, not call, but access import meta after changing the URL, the URL of the page, the module record already captured. Okay, uh, so that uh, means then, then, then Mark's suggestion is has to be the solution yeah. because otherwise you will not be able to um, virtualize that behavior. Right, you have to, it says that you have to capture it on creation. You can't wait until, uh, the import meta expression is evaluated. Or at least the metadata from which it's derived. Yeah, so I think then True. is it is it fair enough to say that? Well, that I mean, you, you, you can still virtualize that because you can still like capture the referrer. Like when you create your new module, you can put in the like options back referrer and the string. And then even if you later change the URL of the page, that string mm -hmm. has been captured. Well, the, I mean, the thing that what you're doing is you're at that point, le you know, leaving it up to the discretion of the author of the import hook, whether to bind it at module creation or on first use. Yes. Uh, and that seems like a bad idea that, that if we're, if, if the semantics that, um, uh, you know, is, on capture, then we can always invoke, invoke the import meta hook on module creation and capture it and not leave um, the possibility of doing it dynamically on first use to the discretion of the author. I think that this is a point in favor of uh, not doing it regularly because right now hosts are free to not capture it. Like HTML specifically captures the URL, but other hosts could choose to. I I'm not I'm not needed. interested in I'm in, I'm interested in minimizing the amount of discretion hosts have, and and um, uh, having the uh, two six two spec um, 
uh, create as much universal agreement among hosts as we can get the, the existing hosts to agree to. And if this is not, and the only hosts that, have put, that generally put up a fight are the HTML hosts. So if what we're specifying already agrees with the behavior of the HTML hosts, I think we can be more specific. We can take this discretion away. So, so I, I, I feel that they, I, I feel that the if we are going to call it for me the only question really is uh, not not a question but the mental model is that if we're going to do eagerly then why having a hook in the first place and not just import meta so oh. that is that is the so that's a good question but the decision tree looks like um, oh there, there, there's a good there's a good answer which is for modules that never mention meta or direct eval, they never call the hook. That's that's not how it plays out. The, you, the choice is actually between providing an import hook, an import meta hook, or providing an import meta. If you do provide an import meta, that means that you have to have more reflection on the module source API in order for import hooks to provide the behavior that they need to have, right? As, we previously discussed having a needs import meta uh, property on module sources. That would be necessary if we're eager. It's not necessary if we're ad hoc. I don't understand ad hoc. Uh, if if it's if uh, import meta is created on demand and during the evaluation of the module, we do not need to expose the needs import meta flag on module source objects. So that's. Uh, but you're distinguishing that from from eager. I thought that sounds like the same as eager. Uh, that there are two paths, one of which is eager, okay. and one of which is lazy. Let's uh, eager is the case where uh, the import meta must be constructed at the time of module construction, or provided if the, mod if the module source declares that it is needed. Okay. Right, and then the uh, the lazy. Uh, the lazy one is where there's an import hook on the module rec, uh, on the module handler, um, which is called at the time of the first evaluation of an import meta expression in that module, right? So, 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 so I, th I think there's there there's the first the eager case divides up into into two cases that um, that I think is the source of my confusion. There's you have to provide an import meta object if the module says it needs one, or you provide a, a import meta hook that does or does not get called on construction, depending on whether the module is, you know, statically um, might need one or not. Okay, so I recommend discarding the second case because it's unnecessarily Baroque. Um, the, if the, 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 it seems that's the one that seems simplest to me. Um, so you don't so I, need you don't need a separate needs meta flag on the module source. It's just that the hook does or does not get called at construction time. The user of the API can always just provide the hook and then not construct the meta object if the hook never gets called. And I think I understand what you're suggesting is that the module constructor itself on its own stack would call the import meta hook if the mod if the if the module source also given to the module constructor has effectively at at an a needs import meta property on it, but it can be an internal slot in this design instead of being a public property. Yes. Okay, so there are three cases. <laughs> There's so the um, yeah, I understand what uh, I'm, I'm behind behind in the conversation. I was thinking about what Nicola was saying. Nicola is right. You will be able to emulate, still emulate, and virtualize the current behavior of the host. Because at, at creation time, you can create a handler that captures the current URL, the location uh, path of the current page, 
and you can have the two hooks in there, the input hook and the meta hook. And then in the meta hook, you rely on the this value to, to get the euro, no matter how many steps you, you have taken at the time the hook is called, the user can capture that and do that um, in user land uh, to virtualize the, the module system. Um, so that I'm fine with that, uh, with that principle as well. Like I, I feel that that's uh, flexible enough, but obviously they might not know about it and they might make the mistake of just getting the URL at the time of the hook call. And that might not be the value that they want, but again, it's up to them to virtualize it in one way or another because that's what they're looking for. So since we only have four minutes left, I like before ending, I want to check if everyone agrees uh, with me on the fact that JavaScript, like user, like this model API should be exactly as powerful as the host hooks, like API exposed to actual host. Uh, because I'm like, we are discussing some things which are different from how host hooks behave. So I think that if we want to restrict or give more power to the JavaScript API, we should also restrict or give more power to the host hooks. I agree. And I would like to restrict both. Thank you. Um, I think that uh, if I understand Mark's position, I think that I would say more. I think I would say that we would like both the host hooks and um, and the virtualized host hooks to provide the same expressiveness. And we want to limit that expressiveness to um, what is necessary for existing engines and provide no more power than existing engines need. Yes, yes. Okay, so the good news is that HTML only uses the less powerful version of the import meta hook. Uh, so the one that it's like it just gives us an object to copy the properties from. So it does not matter if you do it eagerly or lazily. Uh, good. But however, uh, I think that we had the lazy version not for HTML but for Node.js. So we should check with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, and the, and, the, and the issue is, and, the, and remember that the real question is not what they're currently doing, but what they're willing to do. The, the, the Node.js folk yes. are motivated to not create properties of the import meta object like import meta.resolve in the cases that they do not need to. I think that they would be satisfied by either lazy or eager, as long as it's not constructed unless it's needed. Yep. Um, there's some wiggle room, I think, between um, our heuristic for whether they're needed and whether they're actually evaluated. I think it, it, whatever optimization they're interested in, if I lose the optimization uh, for modules that have a direct eval syntax in them, and they lose the optimization for modules that have an import meta expression that's never evaluated, I don't think anyone will care about that loss of optimization. I agree. Um, okay, so we're down to the wire. Um, so action items, I think, coming out of this meeting are that we would like to add non-normative non text mentioning the referrer to the PR um, uh, for and, and otherwise that uh, it's ready to go. Um, the- can we, a, can we add that in a second pull request, not on this one? That's fine by me too. Um, the, uh, and then the second piece, is uh, that we have a remaining, uh, rem uh, we, we still have to decide on uh, what degree of eager or lazy we need want to the import meta hook to be. And I will um, add that to future topics. Um, and yeah, thank you. That's a meeting. Good. All right, so are we going to merge the pull request as it is or do we need to make more changes to it? Or I'll give you a, I'll give you a stamp today. Okay, good, good. And All right. we Keep making modifications. Um, uh, Nicolo, uh, 
um, when are you going to be ready for uh, second pass on on the refactor, how the refactor affects this so we can make the changes as well? Yeah, so uh, I opened the pull request on Icon 262 so we can, and, like, we can start writing text on top of that pull request. However, uh, I'm still waiting for reviews on the HTML side. So there may be some minimal changes to the 262 PR to make sure that we preserve the existing behavior. All right. And I don't really know how to encourage people to review the HTML PR other than just writing in their matrix room. All right. Chris, is there an Indo meeting today? Yes, there is. I'm on my way. OK. See you guys. Bye. Oh, um, by the way, Kari, did Yep. Oh. Oh, like if you could review my 262 PR, that would be. Yeah, send me the link. Send me the link. On, okay. uh, I was I was about to try to track it down, but you send me the link. That's easier. <laughs> <laughs>